You asked for it, you got it. Welcome to the occlusion calling advanced tutorial. Occluder versus occludee. When we select an object, we will see the occluder static and occludee static on the occlusion calling window. Anything marked with occluder will hide anything behind it. We can use it for wall, rocks and big objects, for example. The occlude option means that it can be hidden by other objects in the scene, other occluders. The default is using both an occluder and occlude on your objects. But you might be asking yourself, why would I make something only occlude? For this we have two examples. First of all, things like trees won't hide anything behind it. That means that all the occluder data that will be baked by the tree won't be used in the actual game. The same goes for the net that have a lot of holes in it and therefore won't be a good occluder. FYI, the occlusion calling takes into account transparency, so if you have transparent things, it won't take them to account, so don't put them as occluders either. Now let's talk about some baking variables. Okay, so I made a basic scene with a few objects. When we bake using the default values and go to visualization, we will see that some objects are actually blocking things and some don't. To fix this, we'll change the smallest occluder size to 1. That means that every object larger than 1 meter will be taken to account when we bake the scene. The next variable we'll use is the smallest hole. Every hole in our mesh larger than this size will be rendered as a hole. And every hole smaller than this size will be filled in. That means that we can't look through it. This variable main purpose is to compensate the fact that most renderers have unintentional holes. Unity recommends putting the values between 0.05 and 0.5. Just play with it and see what fits you. In this example, I changed it to 0.5, so most of my fence is blocking the view. If you have small holes like this, you might want to change it to enable the players to look through the holes. The last variable we can change is the black face threshold. Basically what it does is removing data and lowering the quality of the data of the baking to lower the occlusion data size. Most of the things it removes is the inside of the object and things that you don't normally see in your scene, like the inside of the mountain for example. That way it can lower your data size without actually hurting your game. If you are changing this, play with it and test it because sometimes it makes artifacts that you don't want in your scene and have problems so just be careful. Some other things you need to know. If we want to have a general idea about what our scene is gonna look like, in your scene change the scene draw mode to overdraw. Now we can see what object is gonna be behind what, what's gonna be hidden, what's gonna be shown and maybe find something we didn't think about. To fix it back, change the draw mode to standard. Another thing we need to know is how to clear our data. We can just press clear and it will clear all our baking data. I personally don't think it's necessary, because when you bake, it overrides all the other baked data you have, so you don't need to clear it before you bake again. Now let's go to visualization. We will see that we have a new window in our scene view. Camera volumes show where the places that we're gonna render in the occlusion calling. For this example, I just put few blocks on the side to make the area bigger so it will include more, but later we will learn how to do this properly. If we are not any kind of volume, we won't see the visibility lines. The lines that make us see what object is blocking what. Last one is portals, and we will see how to use them in a second. And an extra bonus tip, we can actually use the camera settings to change our occlusion calling. The easiest way is changing the clipping planes, that way only close things will be rendered. You might see other games having fogs and things like this, I will link tutorial to how to make a fog, so you can just make the camera plane closer to you and put a fog around it, and that way you don't have to render a lot of things in your scene in the same time. Let's talk about dynamic objects. One of the easiest things to do in occlusion calling is dynamic occlusion. In the mesh renderer, in the additional settings, you have dynamic occlusion setting. By default, it will be set to true. That means you can move it around and it will be hidden by any static occluder. We don't have dynamic occluder, but we have something pretty similar. Let's talk about portals. Here we have a scene with a basic door. When the door is closed, we want it to block the view, but when it's open, we want to see through it. And as you can see, enabling and disable it don't change the baking data because it's static baking. To make the portal, add the occlusion portal component. The occlusion portal have very basic variable, the center, the side of the portal, just like a collider would, 
Be aware that the normal is set to default, so you need to change it when you put it into the object. And the most important one, the open variable. As you can probably guess, when it's true, the portal is open so you can fit through it, and when it's false, you can see through it because it's closed. You can also change it through a script by getting the component and changing the open value. Before we go into the last part, I just want to say I broke my head for a week trying to make this tutorial and understand everything deeply, so I want to invite you to my Discord channel, because if you have any problem and there is anything you don't understand perfectly, just ask me there and I will answer you as fast as possible, because I broke my head of it and you shouldn't too. And last for this tutorial, occlusion areas. To start, we'll create an empty game object to hold the area. Press add component and add the occlusion area component. Move the area and change its size using the variables or the handles. Don't forget to bake and you have your occlusion area set up. But what is an occlusion area? The occlusion area have two main purposes. The first one is to have higher occlusion precision in the area. If you are making an MMORPG and don't, then you would want to put an occlusion area on the main base when everybody else spawn and not in the middle of the forest where nobody usually is. Unity's official advice is to put the area in the scene where the camera is most likely to be located at runtime. The second useful thing I found, and this is not in the Unity documentations, it will create volumes where you put the area, otherwise volumes will be created only next to occluders, and you won't see the visibility lines unless you are very close to them, as you can see in this example. And if you remember previously, I did add some objects because I had problem with the visibility lines. So occlusion area is the actually right way to do this. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and you might like this video about optimizing sprites, and you might want to make your occlusion calling look better by adding a fog. Hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time. Bye!